Welcome to the Get Real Podcast, your high octane boost of full on reality therapy for personal, business, and investing success with your host, Ron Phillips, because somebody's got to tell it like it is. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Get Real Podcast. Ron Phillips here. Another week, another show. Um, that today we're going to talk about something that's uh, that a lot of people request or have questions about both um, from the show and internally. Uh, and it's one of the things that kind of goes unnoticed. Um, I don't know, maybe it's not thought a lot about, but there's a lot of questions that seem to come from it. And to help me with this today, uh, which well, first off, this is acquisitions. This is actually finding good real estate deals, and also, um, you know, helping to create um, really good real estate deals. And to help me with that is our director of acquisitions, Joanna Ross. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Rob, for having me. I'm very excited. Yeah, I'm excited that you're here. Joanna's been with us for a while, and she comes with um, an enormous amount of experience in. Not only um, property management, where you know oh, she works in property management for over a decade, and not not like little property management, but like big, gnarly, like REIT sized kind of uh, real estate investment trust sized type property management, but also larger acquisitions, um, construction. Um, so a host of experience, um, and and it shows, Joanna. It's so it's like refreshing to have you here and to help us. Um, with our acquisitions. Um, so anyway, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am super excited. Of course, I've seen the podcast. Didn't think I needed to be on here, but I'm excited to join. Hopefully I can impart <laughs> some of my knowledge <laughs> to the fan base. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad that you agreed to come on because what we're going to talk about today, um, everybody listening wants to know about this, right? It's how, how, do, how do these deals come about? What is involved? Because we really don't talk about that that much. You know, we have all these great deals that are just kind of there. And I think sometimes people take for granted that they just magically show up. But there's a whole lot of work that goes into making these things happen. Joanna, talk, talk to us a little bit about where these things start, how, how we, how we, you know, all the work that goes into like making one of the one of these deals actually happen on on our website. Of course. Well, I will say that each deal is different. Um, We do have these deals from different sources. Um, Some are from um, property managers we work with, um, with developments that are coming up. So typically what I do for any new products, I will look and work with the builder, have a conversation with them just to make sure that they're the type of people we want to do business with. And ultimately our clients are going to want to do business with. And Then we have to actually review the inventory. Does the inventory make sense for an investor? You know, I think one of the biggest misconceptions is that if a home is great for a homeowner to occupy, that it should be great for an investor. And actually, it's most of the time it doesn't. Um, For us, they're not the same. Not the same. same. (laughs) We, when we're looking for our properties, we want a cash flowing property that an investor is going to be able to add towards their financial plan. Not just something that's nice that we want to work and live in. So for sure, those are some things we look at as well. I like the first thing you said because it, it it really is important. You know, I think another thing we 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 talk about on the show a ton is um, core values and working with people internally. I mean, we, you remember when we were doing our our interviews, we we're talking <laughs> about core values a lot, and that's actually one of the things I remember distinctly about talking to you is that you pointed out that you really liked the core values that we actually talked about them so much. Um, and I think most people would realize that internally we would, we would do that, right. but it's just as important externally. Um, like all of our partners, you know, we go through the same thing. Like we're, we're, we're asking questions to try to determine like, are you a good core values fit for us, for our clients? Right. Um, I really appreciate that you brought that up. Um, what are some things that you're looking for when you're when you're talking to sellers that that 
lead you to believe that they would be a good partner for us and and ultimately for our investors. Of course. Well, kind of speaking to those core values, I'm looking to see, are you transparent? Do you have integrity? Um, are you able to get a hold of? <laughs> if we can't, you know, reach out to you um, because when we get things under contract, it moves fast. Sometimes things change and I need to be able to reach you. So if it's kind of hard on the front end of doing business with you, that means our clients will experience the same. So I'd look at that. Um, I see too, um, do you stand behind your product or is it just about a number? Um, because again, we're not just buying something that we're going to consume right away. It's going to be something that our clients hold on to for some time. So we want to make sure it's a good value to them as well. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And uh, don't get me started on people not calling back. Um, <laughs> I, get, I get all these calls. I get all these calls from these um obvious like virtual assistant appointment setters who are trying to set an appointment for somebody to give me an offer on the properties that I own. And my wife keeps asking me, why do you, why do you talk to these people? I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to determine how many people I have to talk to before somebody will actually give me an offer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I lost count. Joanna, I don't know how many people have called me and then they never call me back. To your point, like, all, all you have to do is 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 just do what you say you're going to do, um, and if you you know if you give me an offer, like I'll I'll sell if the offer's decent, right, and, right. And you make me an offer, I'll sell, and I tell every one of the appointment setters that, and um, I have yet to get one callback. They're just wasting their money sending me. Yeah. I, I don't even I don't understand. I don't understand. So and I don't I understand, understand that. Of course, why, why would why would you not call back when you're trying to get business? I don't know. I don't know. But that is a very big telling sign. So if I can't get a hold of the people, that means we get under contract, questions pop up, the clients are going to mm -hmm. have that same experience. And then, of course, where even though it's not our inventory and our property, it still connects back to us. So our clients on the, the end is going to say, hey, you know, RP, why we can't get answers to these questions? What's happening? So, of course, that's big, huge. Okay, so we've decided all that's a great fit. They answer the phone. You can get a hold of them. You get you get some, um, uh, I, I, you know, get some properties in. Sometimes a lot, and sometimes it's just a handful. Yeah. Um, what's the next steps? So like you you get all this information in, um, and then what do you do? Then it comes to the fun part: running numbers. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's the biggest thing for us at that point. It's like you said, a good cultural fit. The inventory looks great, but now we have to see how does the inventory perform? And that's where I will go through and run numbers on what are the different financing options we have? Um, of course, we have our preferred lenders and different lenders that we work with. Sometimes the sellers may have lenders that's offering financing deals. So typically for each property, I run about three different finance models to see which ones work best for the most investors. Of course, when they get to the table and, and get through the escrow process, they may choose a different path. But yeah. my job is to kind of see which one will kind of apply to most investors. And, yeah, and from there. It's kind of a puzzle, right? I mean, it's this yeah. is um, and I think I think we did a podcast on the on the levers, right? The, the, all these different levers that we can pull um, inside of financing. There's a few levers um, and then, you know. There's a whole because we've been doing this so long. There's a whole bunch of um, of tricks that we use with these levers to try to trick is the wrong word, but um, maneuvers that we can make yes. <laughs> that that uh, massage the numbers right because it it it, it really is um, it really is a, a just a numbers game. And if we can make the numbers right with a solid property, right. then all of a sudden it works. Um, mm -hmm. And the, the, the thing I think that is um, special about how uh, internally we run numbers is that we're not using we're not using crazy loan programs, mm -hmm. right? We're we're using um, deep relationships within the lending community right. and volume to be able to get really good deals from lenders, um, and. You know, it's kind of interesting because I, 
I talk to people all the time. I'm like, how do you guys do that? <laughs> um, and genuinely, it's just we've been doing it a long time. We have really good, um, um, we have a good, really good reputation, and we have great partners that are right. they're forward looking. I guess we call them up, mm-hmm. we ask them to do things, they do them, uh, and, and we're able to move more properties. Makes running the numbers more fun, Joanna. It does. It does, especially when we can kind of count on a product. I think another part to that with the relationship with the lender is also the part that we educate our investors and it makes that process easier for them. Um, so we can get a lot more deals done in the same amount of time because our investors are understanding the process is smoother and, and that helps a lot. You know, delays is probably the most costly thing in real estate. Um, and also delays can make people not want to work with you or go the extra mile to get you that great deal. So I yep. think combination of all of that really helps out when we're doing our properties. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, okay. Um, and then one of the things I think that's, that's really critically important that I think also kind of goes un, unnoticed, I guess, is that once we get all of that in place, this is still not a complete deal. <laughs> because we're missing one of the most, well, missing the most important piece to making a real estate transaction, uh, yeah. investment real estate transaction work, which is the property management company. Yes. How in the world do you vet a property management companies when they all know the talking points? It's almost like, it's almost like interviewing politicians, right? Like they <laughs> all have yeah. the talking points. Does it, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter which side of the aisle they're on, they've got their talking points, and and at least I, I think they're all lying. Um, <laughs> so it's it's to try to figure out which one's actually telling you the truth. Uh, how do you how do you vet property management companies? Well, I think like to your point, having that experience in property management, I don't ask the surface level questions. I mean, those are important, like hey, cost, you know, things like that, but situational questions will really determine how much they know about property management and how they would perform in the best and worst case scenarios. You know, a lot of times we do work on this is the ideal process, right? But as you know, with property management, you're going to have those one off worst case scenarios. And honestly, it's not so much about avoiding bad situations. It's about how do you work through them? And, and that's what's more important to our investors, to us, is not so much of having an issue. How do you resolve it? Do you resolve it in a way that makes sense, that minimizes delay, minimizes expenses, and that our investors walk away like, dang, that was unfortunate. It happened. But I'm so happy I had this PM company. Um, that's what I look for. It is so important <laughs> because to your point, real estate is a great investment, but it comes with risk as well, Right. Yeah. And what we're trying to teach our investors is that we don't want you to carry that risk alone. We don't want you to manage your own properties. Use the PM, but they have to be great in order for it to make sense and you maximize your profits as well. Yeah. And um, man, uh, <laughs> property management companies, um, property management companies get a bad rap. And it's a, t- it's a tough job. It's a tough mm-hmm. job. Um, but the good ones, man, they're good. They're just good. Um, now, the bad ones, well, <laughs> I, I've experienced, I'm trying to figure out how I say this without um, getting us an E for the, uh, for the podcast today. I'm trying to back down my, my use of uh, explicit language on the show, which uh, hopefully everybody appreciates. Um, yeah, the bad ones just, man, they suck and, and, and it's painful on, um, on your financials, but the good ones, uh, they're worth so much more than we pay them, uh, because, because of everything that they do. Um, so <laughs> to your point, like, um, in, in the vetting process, um, you're asking not the surface level questions, like give us some examples of, of like really good questions you can ask for a property management company trying to vet them to find out if they really are the good, the really good property management companies. Of course, I think one of the biggest topics is maintenance, repairs. 
Um, a tenant isn't a place. These things come up. It's not their home, you know, so they'll say it and move on. But what happens? How do you minimize costs? So I ask those questions. Hey, do you have third party um, maintenance relationships in the community? It, how do you minimize delays? If this were to happen, worst case scenario, you have a pipe burst. What is your process to kind of address that? And also, I really listen for the communication aspect in that. When this happened, are you a PM company that just does it? And then two weeks later, tell the owner, hey, by the way, this happened. It was $2,000. Or do you have a way of prioritizing the issue right away while also find a way to communicate that to the owner as soon as possible? You know, I think most of the times it's not so much what a PM did. It was the fact that the owner had no idea it happened. Right. Yeah. Um, they just want to know. It's not like they're going to be able to fly there and take care of it themselves, but just being aware, knowing in the back of their mind, hey, I'm probably going to have this expense comes through. Hey, I might want to just understand that the tenant is still going to be okay with this, right? Because we want to keep tenants in there. And tenants will move out of a place if they have bad PM, never response, and there's always something to repair or replace. It's just a hassle for them. So that's a big topic. Maintenance. (laughs) For sure. Yeah. Maintenance, um, vacancies, those are the two oh, things that cost people money. Um, the most. And, yeah. and typically, the lack of maintenance leads to vacancies. Yep. <laughs> so, yep. you know, it's kind of one of those things that if you kind of take care of one, it really does make everything else easier to manage. It certainly mitigates uh, the risk of the other, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're up to date on your, on your maintenance anyway, then... You know, even if you have a vacancy, it'll get filled quicker. Um, turn time will be shorter. Uh, all of that stuff. Yeah, I didn't even think that I had to ask PM companies, like, do you actually inspect the property? Believe it or not, a lot of people don't do that so much anymore. So if you have a tenant, say a long-term tenant that's there four or five years and you've never stepped foot on the property, by the time they leave, the house is completely degraded. The cost yep. of expense and repairs is enormous. And now that owner has to pay a lot up front to either just get another tenant in there or even get it to a point where they can resell it. And that's a lot. of Our clients do that a lot. You know, after a certain amount of years of holding their investment, they're ready to sell it because it has a peak in appreciation. But that cost of expense with repairs can totally change what they thought in their head as to what kind of profit or financial, you know, when they were about to get. (laughs) So we vetted a builder, vetted the numbers, vetted the property management company. What's the next step in the process? Once we have that nice little trifecta (laughs) together, right? Now it's time to really list the properties. Um, With our process, we do vet the PMs and have them attach those properties so they're ready to pre-market, pre-lease them. So ideally, by the time they go through the closing process, we would love to have, hey, you close on this property and you have a tenant already. That is our ultimate goal. So ultimately, that's what we're looking at. Perfect growth, that happens. Other times it doesn't. So another thing we do, we do not leave the investor hanging after closing. We continue to work with the property management group to push and motivate them to get those leased up sooner rather than later. A lot of times we have repeat buyers. So they see this is leasing up quickly. They're comfortable with the PM company. Sometimes people will choose properties based on who's managing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It doesn't end (laughs) at the closing date. uh, I mean, I have a property management company in in, uh, in South Carolina here. And I keep asking them, like, can you find me more property for you guys to manage? Mm -hmm. They're so good. They don't find me any properties to buy, unfortunately. But, you know. Yeah. I would buy more properties there because they're, they're they're that they're that good. We go through this process and I, and and it just is a it's a I guess what I want everybody to understand is that there's an enormous amount of work that is going in on the back end um, to make these pretty little deals that show up, you know, on our cool website and you know everything's there, all the numbers are there. Um and Joanna is like is like the puppet master behind the scenes, just making all of this stuff work, and it never stops. No, it literally, no. It literally never stops um, because, I mean, last th- this week, um, I remember Joanna was super excited. She loaded some properties on the site, and they were gone. 
they were gone. And, and it's 24 and this, hours. <laughs> yeah, this is ex- I mean, it's exciting when, 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 when that, that happens, of course, um, internally. But I, I know like Joanna feels a sense of pride that, you know, these things moved so fast at the same time. She's like, Oh crap. Like now I got to go get, I got to go with that, that many more uh, properties to replace these properties. It's just, it's just this constant never ending beat of a drum of, of getting really good inventory. Um, and I think sometimes, uh, it's, it's easy to take for granted how, how much work that is, is actually involved in, in uh, making that happen. Yeah. And to your point with the sellers, because that's where most of my relations are, relationships are forming with the sellers and then the PM groups. And a lot of times sellers say, why would we list our properties here? You know, when we can just have them in the open market with a brokerage team. And I said, what we do is different. And so the biggest thing that I always stand on is the fact that we are setting this up perfect where our investors, we, it's not like, hey, we put this out there. We hope someone sees it. We have a pool of investors that we work with that we are constantly growing their portfolio. So one thing I always lean on with the sellers, I'm like, listen, we do volume and we do it well, you know, and it just I love when that happens when I work with a seller and I say, hey, this is what we do. And of course, some people kind of, okay, we'll try this. We'll give you, you know, this many. We'll start out with these first 10 properties or such. Really not expecting much because a lot of times they've had their properties on the open market and they said, I look on the Zillow and I see 200 days. <laughs> and then we sit here and get it on our side and it's gone, you know, within a, a week or two. So it is definitely a win and it really helps the sellers understand why we are different and why they want to work with us. I think that's yeah. one thing that I love the most. And I love when our team does it. Yes, to your point, it makes more work for me. But at the same time, it makes me look incredibly great. Because I am saying this is what we do, and now we're actually doing it. <laughs> what we do, and and it's done, and it's yes. done. Then this yes. is more. Then this mm-hmm. is more. And I think the other really cool thing too is that you know while we have relationships with, and, and it's 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 kind of fun because we have relationships with um, the, the investors, and of course we're building relationships with the sellers, and the property management companies, and all these people. Um. But we're, we're not only growing the portfolios for our investors, we're growing the ability for the, for the uh, sellers to be able to do more properties, either build them, rehab them, whatever. And we're mm-hmm. growing portfolios for property management companies so that they've got the, the, the money and resources to be able to grow their teams, provide better service. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it, it's just another way everybody gets to win. It's a, it's, yeah. uh, and it is, it is literally fun. I, I made a post on Facebook the other day about this, that it's so much fun to be able to help people uh, do something they've wanted to do for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. And in the process, get to help companies like, you know, producers of, of inventory, mm-hmm. property management companies, title companies, lenders, you name it. Everybody's, everybody's they business get excited is when a seller is able to develop an area and improve this city, you know, and I love those ones we work on with new developers where it's something that's not been touched. It's just kind of like the city, like we wish we can do something with it. They're like, we're going to buy the land. They work with us as they're building. We are pre-marketing. And a lot of times we have deals that are sitting, waiting for the home to get finished, just the clothes. So yeah. it just, it's a, a full circle effect of positivity and, you know, winning. And I love that part. It just it makes me excited. And I love to hear that from, you know, the the city officials, because to your point, when I'm doing a lot of this um, building numbers and stuff, I'm calling the county, you know, to make Mm -hmm. sure I'm getting the taxes and understand the process and how it's different for an investor versus a homeowner that's occupying it. I think I get a lot of pushback on that the most with um, sometimes we do get numbers from builders like this is what it's going to run for. And then I do the numbers and it's totally different. And they're like, wait. Uh, this should be much higher. I'm like, no, those numbers, we can't use that because this is the accurate way to calculate taxes because our investors yeah. are not going to occupy this home. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I push back and they love that because I'm transparent. Yeah. And, and, um, and, and a lot of times they were trying to be transparent. But they just, they just didn't know. They just don't know. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it takes, it takes a lot of experience to be able to do this and do it effectively. Um, and you do a great job. Of it, Joanna. So thank you, thank you. We we appreciate having you on the team. I appreciate you having you on the show. 
Thank you. And see, it was, and it was fun. It's always fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, yeah, I mean, when you love what you do, you're passionate about it. It's it's definitely fun. All right. Well, now, if um, if people out there, if look, if you have um, questions about what we just talked about, if you have suggestions for uh, future episodes, if you would like to get in contact with us because you just heard Joanne and you're like, well, yeah, that's a lot of work I don't have to do and I want to invest in real estate, reach out to us. Uh, invest at rpcinvest.com invest rpcinvest.com um, and if you like the show um, especially this one in particular you can you can like it and leave us a comment um, and in addition to that if you're feeling it you can always go review the show and we would really appreciate that because it helps us help more people Joanna thank you again so much for being on the show really appreciate it and until next week everybody Get out there and make something happen. Welcome to the Get Real Podcast. Your high octane boost of full on reality therapy for personal, business, and investing success. With your 